Hello and welcome to IMDb's Worst 100. Today we're looking at number 83, Story About Love. From Norway. Okay, well, we should probably just come out and say it that this week marks a new low for the two takes IMDb Worst 100 challenge list. You guys, we couldn't... <laughs> We couldn't get any subtitles. We looked everywhere. We've tried everything, but... <laughs> to be honest, this film is pretty hard to track down anyway, just the actual film. So yeah, we couldn't even find Norwegian subtitles to try and translate them. So what we did was uh, we sat down and we watched a critically panned Norwegian <laughs> art house film in Norwegian. And we don't speak Norwegian. <laughs> so, as a disclaimer, this is not going to be a very uh, good review. <laughs> <laughs> but more of a, a blow-by-blow experience. A journey, per yeah. se. <laughs> unfair to make you try and explain the plot but I guess for for our audience who might still be watching or might have clicked <laughs> away already I don't know do you want to give it a go I mean we originally thought maybe it could be fun like I could try and guess the plot and Emma could look at the plot on Wikipedia and we could see how close I get to it but there's two problems with that one there's no plot on Wikipedia and two there's no plot in the film either <laughs> So I can only really describe a series of things that you see. Uh, essentially, it is a film about three couples that live in different cities. And that is about as far as I could get into the story, I think. All the film is, is just shots of these couples going somewhere. Being moody. <laughs> And then there's like a voiceover just talking. That's the thing with the film is there's no interaction between the characters. It's all narration over the top. It's just things, not a lot of things happening and narration. It was literally the worst situation we could have had with having a film that we have no subtitles for because we had nothing to bounce off or to guess from. No. It's literally as bad as it could have been. <laughs> the, the narration is completely atonal as well. It, it's all done in this kind of, you know, literally like if you're watching The Simpsons and they were doing a parody of an art house French film. <laughs> That voice, like... Sorry if that, that didn't mean to be insulting Norwegians there, but... I'm not... <laughs> but that's, that's my point, is that it's just simply done in that kind of husky art house kind of way. And so there's not even any indication that they're talking about it. You know, everything is delivered in the same way the whole way through the film, and the visuals are incredibly bland. I mean, I feel like we're going... We're not really even talking about the plot here, but... <laughs> I mean, I don't know what to say. There's... I think you've done an all right job. The only thing I'd add to that is it's set over, like, four years, and it's revisiting the people in it. That's all I can add to mm. that. Oh, there's a bit where a guy goes on roller skates into a cafe, and then he goes out. That's, that's, uh, I guess that's something. Do you think this film would have been good with subtitles if we'd known what they, what they were saying? Obviously not. It was so <laughs> bad. It was so, like, 
the quality was the bit that upset me the most. It was so cheap looking, but like not in a fun way at all. It was just dark and drab mm. and dreary and it sucked all the life out of me so hard. <laughs> It would have been better with the subtitles because we probably could have laughed at the stuff they were saying because clearly it was all shit, probably, wasn't yeah. it? Um, Supposedly it's all kind of poems. Yeah, and that might have been quite funny. But it was just one of those depressing bad films in the sense that it was just... It made me feel, like, miserable watching it. It's very much like a sort of a sick form project where, you know, you have long shots of just absolute nothing. It's just like, oh, this is a shot of a street slightly out of focus. This is a shot of an alleyway. And that goes on for ages. That's the thing. The shots that they use, obviously, they were going for lots of scenery shots. But scenery shots don't always have to be beautiful, but they need to be striking in some way. Like, they weren't beautiful shots and they weren't striking shots or, like, anything that engaged any emotions other than depression because there was no sense of i'm filming something for any deliberate reason you know there was no thought put into the composure of the of the frames or like or anything it's all handheld every shot is like yeah it's so (laughs) amateur even stuff that's a wide shot of a cityscape why wouldn't you put that on a tripod like what is that like so many of the shots are so dark at night time you just saw these like teeny tiny lights it was just like oh for god's sake (laughs) everything was so awful it honestly depressed me that's upset me when we were watching it you know norway is a beautiful country as well and it's not all filmed in norway though is it it's filmed in all different parts of the world uh, paris and new york York. and And, uh, yeah they they managed to take all of these kind of iconic locations and just make them look horrendous Sucked everything out. I think the only nice shot was the beach, maybe. Yeah. I didn't mind the beach. This is the 90s, and it made it look like... Somehow it looked like it was the 70s. Yeah, I would have said the 70s. Yeah. A B-movie made in the 70s. Yeah. And that still would have been bad for that. Yeah. <sighs> would you say this is your worst film experience? Because we do this list, I do think about this kind of question quite a lot. You know, what is my worst film experience? I think the three worst film experiences previous to this... In fact, I'll go for two. The two worst have been It's Pat. I've contracted a horrible disease and and I've been told I don't have much time to live. (laughs) What should I do? Why don't you just call 1-800-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah-wah. All right, next call. I really hated that. God, I hated It's Pat so much. And Zardoz, which we haven't actually watched on this channel. But, I mean, if you haven't heard of Zardoz, (laughs) it's a a film about Sean Connery in a red loincloth. In fact, let's show you a picture of that right now. Yeah. (laughs) Tell me everything. My name is Zed. For Zardoz, I am an exterminator. (laughs) And somehow it manages to be incredibly boring. Yeah, I think, Um, yeah. But sorry, not to get sidetracked. That's kind of my standard of where I'm... um, Yeah, I mean, it's certainly in the same ballpark as Zardoz with with the sense that it's incredibly boring and artsy in a really rubbish way. It's not the film's fault that we couldn't understand it. That's our fault. We don't know Norwegian. But yeah, you've got to factor that into the experience, haven't you? It's not just obviously the fact that we couldn't understand what's going on is a factor, but the other factors of the film were so terrible as well. It's not like it was only bad because we couldn't understand it. It's just bad. See... This is the kind of question is, is it worse to watch a film that gives you a negative reaction, like watching something like It's Pat or Meet the Spartans? Or is it worse to watch a film that just gives you absolutely nothing? I think it's better to feel something, even if it's like a lot of anger. I think it's still better to come away Mm. with that experience than like boredom. Then by that logic, this is probably one of the worst. Full disclaimer, we got 20 minutes in and it seemed like the longest 20 minutes of our lives. So we actually put the film into fast forward and watched it at 1.6 times speed. Uh, <laughs> we kept putting the speed up as well. Yeah, we started at 1.4 and then we went up to 1.6. And it still felt bloody long. <laughs> it still is very slow at that speed. Even then, it still was horrendous. And if we'd actually watched it at the f- normal speed, I think I probably would have just given up. Oh yeah, we wouldn't have made it. Time was ticking. Life was ticking. 
But yeah, to get that speed up. I'm so glad you thought of that. It's probably the best idea you've ever had. <laughs> Are there any memorable bits you can think of that stand out from this? I would say just the beach themes. The rollerblading on the beach, the snogging on the beach, just that, like the beach scenes, just because it was probably like the brightest looking scenes and like they were the nicest shots. It, oh in a way, it had the most understandable action. That's actually the exact same bit that I remember. Yeah. And I think because there was something interesting in the fact that the guy was wearing roller skates. Yeah. That's just slightly interesting, isn't it, I guess? Yeah. And then they went to a beach and they went off the beach. Kind of like, okay, it's a couple going for a day at the beach. Yeah. That is sort of a story. Off topic a bit, people in Norway, a lot of people think this is so bad it's good. I don't really get it. But again, I guess we were missing a big chunk of the experience. I thought you might like that little... Tidbit. Yeah, tidbit. I like that. Oh, yeah. Nice little tidbits. Tiddy bits. Tiddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, in a way, this is almost like a bit of a social experiment. And what's happened is that... We were the rats. <laughs> <laughs> this might have worked, this concept... Isn't it funny of us watching a film that we don't understand and then trying to talk about it? But it just turned out that this film was the worst possible film to do that with because there's nothing about it that made any sense. You could really get probably the same experience from just listening to the narration as watching the film because there's basically nothing in the visuals. So this is just an epic fail and... <laughs> will be forever burnt in my mind as one of the worst cinema experiences I've ever had. Right on, sister. I agree. Thank you, IMDb list. You bastard. <laughs> I don't know. Thank you very much for watching. Hopefully our next film on the list won't have the uh, same issues. <laughs> if you're Norwegian and you've seen the film and you understand it, please fill us in on anything we may have missed, which is everything. <laughs> please remember to subscribe, leave a like, and we'll see you in the next one.